the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. My dearly beloved in Christ, today is the feast day of the 13-year-old virgin martyr, St. Philomena, who died in the 4th century. She was martyred by the Emperor Diocletian. She displayed extraordinary courage in the profession of her faith, suffering martyrdom and refusing a throne rather than offend God. On the altar, there's a small statue of the saint and a relic, and then we have a window of her on the epistle side, the third one down. St. Philomena is a shining example of Christian virtue for all of us, especially our youth. Since she's been viciously attacked by the modernist, the Vatican II Church, traditional Catholics have turned to her and their needs and have received help. And all of us at one time or other go through difficult times and we can turn to her and relate to her and get the help that we need. My dear the beloved in Christ, on May 24th, 1802, excavators in the catacomb of St. Priscilla came upon a tomb which had not never been opened. And then they saw there were some three marble slabs in front of it with the name, but it was not in place. It should have been said, Pax Tecum Philomena, Peace Be to the, the Philomena, but it wasn't. And <clears throat> there were ver- various symbols of martyrdom painted in red and included on the slabs. One was an anchor considered a symbol of hope because of its resemblance to the cross and also a symbol of martyrdom because many martyrs had been tied around their necks and thrown into the sea, uh, attached to an anchor. Then there were two arrows, one pointing up, one pointing down. And uh, there's a palm symbolizing triumph and a lily, an emblem of purity. Within the tomb, there was a vial containing dried blood of the martyr. And there have been many, many miracles that have been worked by way of this relic where it liquefies even though it's like 1,700 years old. It's miraculous terms like diamonds, but it's in a liquid form. And then they also found the, the bones of a fractured skull and the bones of a girl 12 to 13 years old. The relics were placed in the treasury of relics, and they remained there until a holy priest from Mignano, Italy, arrived in Rome. Upon approaching the relics, he had an inspiration to acquire them for his church, but he had many, many difficulties. And then during that time, he became seriously ill. So he promised St. Philomena that she would be her, his special patron and the patron of his church and take her to Mignano. He was instantly cured, and all the difficulties in obtaining the relics ceased. He soon headed back to Mignano, happily carrying these relics of St. Philomena. But even on the way, okay, this was 1802, so he didn't drive in a nice car. Uh, They were in a stagecoach, probably. So just like we have luggage compartments in the airplane, so in a stagecoach, the luggage compartment, a lot of it is under your seat, right? But then St. Philomena, it wasn't respectful to her to be under the seat. So the relic kept hitting his legs, and then finally he just put her on the seat (laughs) out of respect. From this time on, countless miracles were worked by the saints' intercession. The sick were healed, the dying were cured. Many conversions were worked. How happy must the humble priest have been who had the possession of these relics. Investigation into the life of St. Philomena was to no avail, as she had been forgotten for so many centuries. Yet St. Philomena revealed to three of her devout clients the story of her life. These revelations have received the imprimatur of the Holy Office, declaring them to contain nothing deserving of censure and giving us the right to accept them. So one of these revelations was made to Mother Mary Louisa. The saint tells us that she was the daughter of a king of a small Grecian state whose parents were converted to Christianity by a Roman doctor named Publius. When she was 13 years old, her father took her to Rome to see the emperor who had waged an unjust war against them. 
The emperor, on seeing the saint, agreed to peace on condition that he received her hand in marriage. Her parents agreed to this and afterwards sought to convince her that she would be happy as an empress of Rome. But she rejected the offer and told them that she had made her spouse, herself the spouse of Jesus Christ by a vow of chastity at the age of 11. My father then endeavored to prove that a child of my age could not dispose of herself as she pleased, and it exerted all his authority to force me to obey. My divine spouse, however, gave me the necessary strength to stand by my resolution. On learning of her objections, the emperor requested her to be brought before him that he might persuade her otherwise. Her father came for her, but she continues, saying my resolution was unshaken, both he and my mother, casting themselves at my feet, implored me to change my mind. O daughter, they exclaimed, have pity on your parents, have pity on your country, have pity on your kingdom. I answered that my virginity must take precedence of all else. St. Philomena endured the attempts of the emperor to persuade her for 37 days. Then the Virgin Mary appeared to her in the dungeon and said that she would leave the place of sorrow in three days, but she would have to suffer cruel torture for the love of Jesus Christ. This was soon fulfilled, for the emperor, despairing of success, had her tied to a pillar and scourged mercilessly to the accompaniment of horrible blasphemies. Then, still unshaken, she was thrown back into the dungeon to die. But God sent two angels to pour a heavenly balm on her wounds. She was cured. The next day, the emperor, seeing her stronger and more beautiful than ever, tried again to persuade her. This having failed, he ordered that an anchor be tied around her neck and that she be uh, to a rope and, and cast into the Tiber River. But once more, Jesus sent angels to her aid. They cut the cord and brought her back to the bank of the river without a single drop of water having touched her garments. The emperor then ordered her to be pierced with arrows and again near death to be thrown into the dungeon. When she was again cured, he ordered the torture to be repeated, but the arrows refused to leave their bows. Claiming that this was a result of magic, Diocletian then ordered the arrows to be heated red hot. This persecution, as St. Philomena says, was of no avail. My divine spouse saved me from the torture by turning the arrows back on the archers, six of whom were killed. This last miracle brought about other conversions, and the people began to show serious signs of disaffection towards the emperor and even reverence toward our holy faith. Fearing more serious consequences, the tyrant now ordered me to be beheaded. My soul, glorious and triumphant, ascended into heaven, there to receive the crown of virginity, which I merited by so many victories. How powerful must be the intercession of St. Philomena! There are many instances where favors have been granted through her intercession. Many who pray to the saint promise to propagate devotion to her if their favors are granted. This has proved to be very pleasing to her and her divine spouse as those requests are often granted. My dearly beloved in Christ, on March 29, 1961, just prior to Vatican II, John the Twenty-Third had her feast dropped from the church calendar along with the feast of a number of other saints. So this hit list included St. Christopher, the patron of travelers, St. George, the patron of England, Portugal, Lithuania, and Georgia, St. Catherine of Alexandria, the patroness of philosophers, St. Barbara, St. Vitus, the patron of epileptics. But this was in opposition to the decisions of Roman congregations. It's also a most disrespectful and rash denial of solemn and fallible decrees and repeated declarations of several popes. Why was St. Philomena attacked? Why were so many of her beautiful shrines, including the one at Ars, France, destroyed? Why did it suddenly become so important to erase all traces of the saint from Catholic liturgical and devotional life. 
Why such unexplainable rage directed against a virgin martyr beloved for over a century by popes, saints, and countless clergy, religious, and laity? St. Philomena, quite simply, was in the way. On the eve of Vatican II, the modernist forces lying in wait to dismantle the Catholic Church couldn't tolerate the innocence, perseverance, and chastity of St. Philomena. The so-called liturgical reformers who couldn't tolerate the holy sacrifice of the Mass, reverence for the Blessed Sacrament, and devotion to Mary had no place for the saints. The Catholic Church's veneration of the saints has been dismissed by Protestants as superstition. Therefore, in the spirit of false ecumenism, liturgical prayers in honor of the saints have been dropped, made optional, or have been rewritten for the benefit of Protestants. Allusions to miracles, defense of the Catholic faith, or to the Catholic Church as a one true church have disappeared. Father Paul O'Sullivan wrote, It must strike any thoughtful Catholic as strange that one of the most loved and lovable of saints, whose devotion is producing such marvelous results for good all over the world, and is being blessed every day by constant, striking, and well-authenticated miracles, is so frequently singled out as the object of attack, not by Protestants or freethinkers, but by so-called Catholics, modernist. The disciple is not above his master, nor is the servant above his Lord. So the clients of St. Philomena must not be alarmed if a like treatment is meted out to their saintly protectress. Well might she ask her traducers, as did the divine master before her, for which of my good works do you stone me? Father Hopkins said, we must see the action taken in 1961 as the work of the devil, in order to deprive people of a powerful intercessor, particularly in the area of purity and faith, at a time when such intercession was most needed. St. Philomena's enemies are also the enemies of Christ and his church. God will not be mocked. Just as the traditional Latin Mass continues to flourish, so also devotion to St. Philomena continues to spread throughout the world. God has sanctioned this devotion by countless miracles. I remember I had an exorcism, and then we were saying some prayers to St. Philomena in between, and then the demon mocked her. So I said, you, you have to apologize. So again, anyway, he apologized, and I said, now you have to tell the truth about St. Philomena. And then it was kind of hesitant, but said, uh, she was a very, very good girl. She was pure, committed hardly any sins, refused a throne, converted people, died a horrible death, and is feared by all the demons in hell. St. Philomena was a virgin martyr who died instead of giving up her virginity. So there's many different ways we can show devotion to St. Philomena. And some of these we have in the bookstore, but one is the cord of St. Philomena. It's red to symbolize her martyrdom and white to symbolize her virginity. But we have it blessed and then we wear it around our waist and it helps us to remain pure. We wear it underneath our clothing. Um, children, however young, may wear the cord. This powerful sacramental is a great protection against evils of all kinds. It has been instrumental in obtaining countless cures and other favors. But especially in regard to purity, it's a, it's a great help. And putting the cord on, they should intend to honor St. Philomena in order to merit protection against all evils of body and soul and to obtain through her powerful intercession the grace of perfect chastity, the spirit of charity, and the grace of leading a truly Christian life. The wearing of the cord is especially efficacious in obtaining and preserving the virtue of holy purity. And you can gain a plenary indulgence on the first day that you wear it on May 25th, August 11th, and December 15th. 
and at the moment of death under the ordinary conditions, Pope Leo XIII blessed and approved this devotion. And then there's novenas to St. Philomena. What's a novena? Novena is a nine, nine days of prayer. Uh, many approved prayers are available. You're not restricted to any set form of prayer. And then there's St. Philomena oil. Uh, it's olive oil that's uh, blessed by a priest. It, it's, first it's burned before a statue or picture of St. Philomena, and then it's blessed. And um, it's very helpful. I know people with, had real serious knee injuries, and then um, they're like 90% uh, better. And um, it's a number of people have been helped through um, St. Philomena oil. Oh, here's another story. The restoration of a woman's sight is recorded through the use of blessed oil that burned before the shrine of St. Philomena. A French woman had recourse to the oil of St. Philomena. For three years, she suffered with the disease of the eyes and suffered so much pain that she could neither eat nor sleep. The slightest contact with air or light would cause her to scream with pain. The doctor did all in his power for her, but finally pronounced the case absolutely hopeless. The poor woman, having devotion to St. Philomena, commenced a novena in her honor and anointed her eyes with the oil. During the novena, her suffering increased in intensity and continued until the morning of the ninth day. She had to be helped and guided by her good daughter in every step she took in the house. On the last day of the novena, the good woman had a mass celebrated for herself, and after the mass... On taking off the bandages, her sight was suddenly restored. So we can honor her by prayer, venerating her relics and images, and imitating her. Um, frequently, St. Philomena Oil has restored sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf, speech to the inarticulate, and the power of using lifeless limbs. So pray to St. Philomena, ask her intercession Take her as a patron saint and confide your children to her care. Remember her feast day, which was so unceremoniously wiped off the books. So there's prayers, chaplets, statues, books, blessed oil, and cords. Pope Gregory XVI said, Pray to St. Philomena. Whatever you ask from her, she will obtain for you. To St. Philomena, nothing is refused. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.